Hello everyone, my name is Vitla Zara and in today's video we're gonna talk about the Pyrrhean folklore region where the Bulgarian tambura is a typical instrument. I'm gonna tell you about the customs that are typical to that region. You're gonna learn more about the folk costumes, dances and instruments as well. This is the third video dedicated to tambura, which is a part of a series of videos that me and my sister created for a project which is funded by National Culture Fund Bulgaria. In this project we're going to present you two of the Bulgarian folk instruments. I'm gonna talk about tambura and my sister Kalina is going to talk about gadulka. The project includes five informational videos about each of them in which we're going to tell you more about the history and construction of the instruments as well as some of the greatest musicians who have contributed significantly to the development of gadulka and tambura. You're gonna see a few music videos as well in which we're going to play some of our favorite pieces composed by some of the most famous Bulgarian musicians. The goal is to popularize those instruments beyond the borders of Bulgaria. And finally, we want to say a special thank you to the National Culture Fund Bulgaria because without their help, we wouldn't have been able to make this project a reality. And now, let's get to the video. I hope you enjoy it. The Pyrin folklore region is located in the western parts of southern Bulgaria in the Pyrin Mountains. This is where the name comes from. The customs in that region are rather interesting and even surprising to some people. Among the most famous are the Kukiri games. They are masquerade games that have been celebrated in Bulgaria for hundreds of years. They are intended to scare away evil spirits and bring health to the entire village. Traditionally, the carnival games are performed mainly by men of different ages but most often bachelors. Each group of cookery has a leader who is the only married man. The costumes include decorated animal masks, most often with horns, and large bells attached to the belt. The cookery walk and dance through villages to scare away evil spirits with their costumes and the sound of their bells. It is also believed that they provide a good harvest, health and happiness to the village during the year. Young children are involved less often because the costumes are always very heavy. These impressive costumes along with the accompanying dances make the games remarkable and outstanding. Another very distinctive feature of the Pyrrhine folklore area are the costumes. Costumes. In the past, the costumes served as an indicator of one's social status, and they also showed whether the person was married or not. The woman's costume in the Pyrrhean ethnographic region includes a chemise, a saya, which serves as an outer garment, a belt, and an apron. The chemise is long and straight. The saya is worn on top and can be made of wool or cotton. The decoration is usually concentrated on the neck and the borders of the sleeve. The elements that are typical to the costumes from this area are the red woolen belt and the long narrow apron. The costume there has only one apron, which makes it distinctive, unlike other areas where women wore two aprons of different lengths. Everything is complemented by many colorful motifs, jewelry for the head, waist and other ornaments. The woman's hair is tucked under a headscarf which is tied low behind the ears. The clothing is finished with thick colored socks and a specific type of shoes that are made of leather. In Bulgarian we call them tsarvuli. The men's pairing costume is characterized by the fact that it is lighter than the women's. This provides easier and agile movements. Unlike other areas, there the men's costume is white. The pants are usually white in color with distinctively narrow legs. The outer garments are wider and longer. The color on the shirt is often missing in this ethnographic region. The vest, which is worn over the shirt, is found either with sleeves up to the elbows or without sleeves. The belt is red in color and is always wound tightly around the waist. Men's clothing is completed with socks, the same type of leather shoes as the women's costume, and a black hat, which in Bulgarian is called kalpak. Dances are divided into three types, male, female and mixed. As I said, women's costumes are heavier and therefore women's dances are slower and at a moderate pace. On the other hand, men's dances are full of movement, dynamics, 
squats, and so on. The music instruments are an integral part of our culture. In the Purim folklore area, one of the most common is the Jura bagpipe, which stands out with its high and clear sound. Another common musical instrument is the zurna, which is a wooden wind instrument. The tapon, which belongs to the group of percussion instruments, is also typical to the area. The tambura is also a typical Purim instrument. We have already uploaded two videos about it, in which I talk about its history and construction. If you're interested, there will be links in the description of the video, so you can watch them if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, you can support us by liking, commenting and sharing it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our new videos. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. The links will be in the description box. Next time, I'm gonna tell you more about some of the greatest Tambura players. Thanks for watching and see you next time!